and welcome back to another video. My name is Caroline, I'm a rising senior at Columbia University and today I'm going to be sharing the key learning strategies that I've picked up over the past three years of college. In preparation for this video, I looked back at my old notes to see exactly how I went about studying for each subject or each course. And it's interesting because I didn't really think I had a set way of studying because it was very flexible based on what I was studying. But upon reflecting on which modes of studying were most common for me and which courses had the most impact on me or was the most fun for me, I've come across a lot of common themes that I hope will help you guys out in your search for your perfect study strategy. Hopefully that will be helpful to you and let's get started. First of all, if you like watching study tips videos like me, almost every single video that comes up has what is called active learning, right? Or active recall. If we think about what passive learning is, passive learning is basically the traditional default style that everyone sort of is used to, right? You're sitting in lecture, your professor is giving you all the slides and verbally giving you all the information that's gonna be on the exam and you think you're soaking it all in, but you might forget a lot of it the next day. Another example would be if you are a textbook learner, right? And you're looking through the textbook, you're taking notes, maybe you're even highlighting, and you feel like that is putting in active work. It's really not because you are you have the information in the textbook and the textbook is right in front of you. And by copying something that has the answers already, I'm not really using any mental power or any brain power to make sure that I remember the information. Instead of highlighting and just taking notes verbatim from the textbook, something that is active would be testing yourself on the material. Try to write questions for yourself as you go through each chapter. That way when you actually look through your outline, it's not giving you the information. It's giving you prompts to help you remember what is important, but you actually have to recall that information or if you don't remember it then you have to go look it up which will help reinforce your learning and this is not anyone's personal fault because there is such thing as a forgetting curve if you've heard of the forgetting curve it's essentially it looks like an exponential decay curve where you learn something on the first day the second day you kind of forget a lot of it the third day you forget even more, the fourth day you forget even more, and then when the test day comes the next week, you only remember a fraction of what you've learned. So how do we combat the forgetting curve? It looks like it's an inevitable part of everyone's memory. But actually, if you look at the data, you'll see that if you space your study sessions out in a particular way, and you also use active recall during each of those sessions, you'll actually be interrupting the forgetting curve, helping yourself to retain the information. If you use the space repetition approach, you'll need to start a good amount of time before the exam actually happens, right? So that you could test yourself over a period of a couple of weeks so that you can actually remember this information. The gaps between your study sessions can get larger and larger as time goes on because your forgetting curve essentially starts with a very steep curve and then it levels out. But then if you disrupt that, the second forgetting curve is actually not gonna be as steep and you're not gonna forget information as quickly. So if you keep doing that and you keep disrupting that curve, you'll eventually be able to retain the information for the long term. The key difference between active and passive learning is the amount of effort that's put in. Something that's interesting is that there was a study in 2019 that found that students actually enjoyed passive learning more. They enjoyed the traditional lecture style because the professor was giving them the information and they didn't really have to work for it. But even though they didn't enjoy active learning as much, active learning had better results than passive learning. And so it's kind of like you feel like you're learning when you're doing passive learning, but you're actually not. You do have to work towards that active style. If you're testing yourself actively and you don't know the answer to something, it makes you uncomfortable and it makes it seem like you have a lot of extra work to do. When in reality, the same can be said for the case of passive learning, except passive learning, you're not being as self-aware. Another thing to remember is that it's a lot easier to remember things that are interesting to you. I'm going off of this biochemistry example because I just took biochem. We're learning about the TCA cycle. All right, TCA cycle is essentially the step between glycolysis and oxidative phosphorylation and the electron transfer chain and everything. And it's a very, you could say complex cycle because there's a lot of enzymes and intermediates involved. But if you simplify it into a mnemonic, it makes everything a lot easier. For example, if I'm trying to remember citrate, isocitrate, 
alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, and oxala acetate. It takes you quite a long time to remember that. The only reason that I remember that is I just looked down on my page and also we talked about all the mechanisms and everything. When you're studying for an exam and you really need to learn all the intermediates, then make a mnemonic for yourself. And I know a popular one is, can I keep selling seashells for money officer? So it's kind of like the Sally sells seashells on the seashore kind of thing. But yeah, mnemonics are a great way to remember things that don't naturally come to mind. So the next part I want to touch on is handwriting notes versus typing notes. I know that a lot of evidence has pointed to the fact that handwriting notes is better for memory retention because you're using more brain function to transcribe what your professor is saying versus kind of just mindlessly typing everything that your professor is saying. I know that I'm guilty of the latter, especially over Zoom. You're already on your computer, but I know that if I put in the effort to actually try to rephrase what my professor is saying in a way that is in my own words, that would be a lot more helpful. That is probably an anecdote that supports the evidence that handwriting is better for memory retention because when you're handwriting, you don't have the ability, unless you're a super fast writer, to write down every single thing that your professor is saying. And so you have to paraphrase everything into your own words, which is a form of active learning, which is good. I'd also highly, highly recommend taking notes on your notes, not just copying verbatim what is on there, but actually reading it and then asking questions and writing down those questions, especially if you're in lecture and you have a copy of the slides and you're taking notes on it and you have a question. You don't want to just forget that question. You want to actually make a marker for yourself. For example, for me, my marker for a question is I write a Q and then I make a box over it. And then sometimes I highlight it in color just so when I'm looking through my notes again, I know that I have a question there that needs to be addressed. And then after the lecture, go on Google and search for the answer. Or if it's a more complex question, then ask your professor at office hours, but just don't forget to ask your question because the questions are really testing yourself. I'm like, why do I not know this missing piece of the puzzle? And by finding the answer to it yourself, you'll actually be reinforcing that knowledge. I wanted to give an example of active learning within the classroom from my own experience. I think that it's definitely a lot easier to incorporate active learning if your professors help you to do so. So if exercises in class are geared towards active learning rather than just passive recognition, and one example of this is the introductory biology course at Columbia. So I took this course as a sophomore and I became a teaching assistant for it my junior year. And then I'm gonna be coming back as a teaching assistant my senior year. So the way that the course is structured is that you have two lectures per week and then you have a two hour recitation, which is essentially um, what the TAs lead. So I lead a two hour recitation a week. I start off my recitations usually with a mini lecture and then we work on group problems. And within my mini lecture, I try to be engaging and I try to ask questions, which hopefully helps these students to retain the information. And I think it's really the group problems as well as the homework assignments that really engages us in active learning. Also the homework questions are not just multiple choice questions that you circle and then move on. They are similar to practice exam questions where you are asked to apply your knowledge to a new context and then explain all your answers. I think that is also important in the process of active learning, learning the why behind every single answer so that when you enter the real world, you'll be able to critically think and actually convince yourself and not just follow along with what other people are doing. You'll be able to think for yourself and rethink for yourself if you get the first answer incorrect for some reason. So in that way, I think that active learning is not just for school. It's not just for an exam you have coming up the next day. It's really a mindset that needs to be formed. And it really makes you a lot more self-aware of what you don't know and how you can improve on that. So with that said, hopefully this guide to studying was helpful to you. I know that it's a lot of information to process. So if you need to rewatch this video, then please do so. Um, or watch other active learning, active recall strategy videos. I think those are really helpful too. I think even when I am not studying, I like to watch these videos, not just because they make me feel like I'm studying, but because I feel like if I, if I watch these enough, 
these strategies that are evidence-based will become so ingrained in my mind that they'll become a habit of themselves. So yes, hopefully that happens for you. Let me know down in the comments below if you like this video, if there are any points that I can elaborate on, or if you disagree with any of the points that are made, I'm interested in hearing about that as well. I'm hoping to make a Q&A video very soon, so keep an eye out for that. And thank you for watching. So I'll see you guys in the next video.